Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Lucy, and today, guys, once again, the tea is extremely hot because I once again found some more dangerous band recall toys that I am shocked even were allowed to exist. You guys love the last video I made so much about dangerous recall toys that I decided today to make a part two. And if today's video gets to 20,000 likes, make it happen, I will make a part three of dangerous band recall toys. Anyways, also, guys, be sure to hit the subscribe button because we are getting so, so incredible close to 2 million subscribers and I do not want you guys to miss out on my future videos so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and without further ado we're gonna get talking about the dangerous recalled toys that I found on the internet and trust me they are crazy so the first really concerning and messed up toy that was recalled and super dangerous is the whammo water wiggler I'm here there everywhere my water spray makes me squirm and squiggle so they call me the Whammo Water Wiggle. This toy is a lot to take in. Let me tell you guys about it. This toy consists of a seven foot plastic hose attached to aluminum water jet nozzle, which is covered by a bell shaped plastic head. The toy is designed to be attached to a garden hose for water fun. It approximately retailed for $3 and 50 cents. It looked like it was an innocent toy, but when somebody turned the hose on full blast, Whammo Water Wiggler turned into a semi lethal weapon. It danced and bobbed erratically and wrapped around you like a boa constrictor and if wrapped around you strong enough that the water pressure was high enough it could literally choke and kill you. Yes I'm not even being dramatic this thing would like spin around the air it would whip around really crazy it could smash into your head or face cause extreme damage to the people around it like I don't know who thought that was a good idea especially in the commercial you can see it's like wrapping around the girl like almost choking her like what? Who thought that was a good idea? I'll charm you and also your big sister. I just love my wiggle. Everybody loves the wiggle. Bamo stated that there was a recall due to the death of a four-year-old boy in March of 1978. The youngster was playing with his whammo and some other children in his backyard when the water wiggler from which one of the bell-shaped head had been removed had come off. The exposed aluminum nozzle became lodged in his mouth and he ended up drowning to death due to the water wiggler. Like, that is horrible and so sad and so messed up. I just don't understand though how people thought that was a good invention. Water wiggler was also involved in a similar death of a three-year-old boy in 1975. Parents are advised not to allow their children to play with this product outside, especially alone. The Whammo Water Wiggler requests its retailers to remove the water wigglers from their shelves at all stores because they were getting so dangerous and so many kids were almost getting choked to death and being unsupervised by their parents and having a lot of accidents while playing with this toy. So in conclusion, these were a horrible, bad, bad idea and they just did not go well at all and they were cringy. So scary. I do not want to wiggle a water wiggler in my house. Water wiggles. No, thank you. <laughs> so the next messed up dangerous toy, guys, is creepy crawlers. Behold my most horrifying creation. Squeeze the colored goop into the bowl. So I actually remember seeing commercials. I don't think they were the original commercials, but I feel like they were still going when I was a kid of these exact toys. Basically, Creepy Crawlers were a remake of the Easy Bake Oven, except for these ones were specifically targeted to boys. Like the packaging on these toys always showed young boys, never showed girls for the most of it, at least the old version. And they were always like smiling and making some weird bugs, frogs, or something gross with their oven toy. They look really innocent, obviously like they were making fun candy. They were just like gummy worm candies, but there was a really dark messed up twist to this toy that a lot of people did not know about. The problem with the toy was that the oven got extremely hot and the liquid plastic was quite toxic. The burns would be so bad that the chemical gel, plastic goop, used for the original crawlers also gave off toxic fumes. A revival in 1978 with new safer formulas and plastic, not metal, molds didn't do as well because kids craved danger. That is just so bad that that happened to the kids who played with the toys. Luckily, I don't think any kids were killed or anything super bad ended up happening, but it was definitely concerning to the parents at the time whose kids had those toys and they were recalled obviously off the shelves and kids ended up not getting them as often. I do feel like I had seen them for a little while too though, like a remake of it like I said, and then they were pulled off the shelves as well. So I don't really know what happened there, but all in general, that was a really big flop of a toy and it was just kind of a weird concept. And then next toy we're talking about is the swing wing. I'm sure you guys haven't heard of this because it is kind of an ancient older toy. that 
I hadn't even heard about until the other day when I was doing research, but this toy is problematic. She is in some drama, okay? Let me tell you why. So the swing wing was actually a swing hula hoop for your head. Basically, the whole objective was that you put the swing wing on your head and you move your head around and the swing wing flies around and you're cool, you're trendy, you're hip, you're fitting in with the kids back in those days, and it was the trendy thing. Everybody had one and wanted one. The reason things were pulled from the shelf was that the toy featured a shooting ball, which led to the choking of a four-year-old boy in 1978. It actually claimed the lives of dozens of children before the FBI shut down the production of the swing wing in the factory at Dublin, Ohio, and burned all the evidence that they ever existed except for the swing wing toy commercial. And not only that, but the swing wing was giving a lot of kids spinal injuries because of the way that they were moving their heads around so aggressively. When they did it so much, it caused a lot of nerve damage in the back of their necks and their spinal cords. And just everything about this, you know, having the ball that swing around at the top was just not safe. A lot of things ended up going wrong with the swing wing and the commercial is just enough to prove that. The way they showed the kids upside down in a tree using a swing wing, it was bad. And the music to this commercial was also very bad as well. And people in the comments also noticed this from like seven years ago under this YouTube video of the commercial. People were commenting like, who thought this was a good idea? Or wow, this would be really great if you threw like heavy metal music over it. Like imagine. Honestly, terrible idea. I don't know what they were thinking, but Swing Wing was an epic fail to say the least. So the next dangerous toy we're going to be talking about is called the Six Finger. A one, a two, a three, four, five, a six. Six. Surprise! It's six finger! A toy where, I don't know if you guys have ever just not wanted five fingers, but add a six finger? Yeah, apparently that was a thing. That's the whole concept, like having six fingers except for the one finger that you add is magical and has some sort of magical powers or something, but they were not good ones. So six finger actually doubled as a toy gun. Not only that, but it had like features where they could shoot bombs out of their hand. So kids would use this to like pretend to shoot other kids, because they could have a fake gun finger, use it to shoot and launch things at other kids. Fires cap loaded bombs and they explode. And it looks like your finger and how will they know? Six finger, six finger, six fingers! And just do all sorts of things with the six finger. I mean, the commercial should speak for itself. It was not a good idea. Not only was it just kind of downright stupid, but it also promoted violence, which a lot of parents got mad about the commercial of the six finger when they saw all that they, you know kids were using it as like a finger gun or they were using it to like shoot things out of their fingers like they were just kind of concerned that this was on the market so eventually the six fingers were pulled from the shelves and they were not good okay they were just bad and last but not least we're going to be talking about a Barbie called Barbie and Tanner so Barbie and Tanner was a very innocent doll that was created for little kids who loved dogs and Barbies no I'm just kidding I never liked Barbies as a kid but I did love dogs anyways Barbie and Tanner was a doll where Barbie Barbie goes around with her golden retriever Tanner and her dog would poop and she would pick it up with a little poop scooper that it came with but the bad part about this was that there was magnets inside of the poop in this Barbie doll that if swallowed when you were a young child like a toddler an infant it could cause internal blockages that would require immediate surgery and even death so these things were obviously pulled off the shelves extremely fast and it was a huge fail the commercial was pretty cute though I mean look at it it was adorable obviously Barbie was just walking with her dog so it seemed like a really innocent fun toy but ended up being deadly and dangerous the cabbage patch snack time kid so if you guys haven't heard about cabbage patches well I've talked about these toys in some previous videos but there was this one specific cabbage patch doll that actually had a lot of kids terrified these dolls were able to chew and they had a very powerful jaw on their mouth and they ended up getting recalled really fast because kids would get their hair stuck in the mouth of these dolls and the dolls would keep chewing and chewing and like pull their hair out not only that some kids have had their fingers pinched and stuck inside of the mouths of these dolls I don't know how or why but it has happened kids could feed their doll a variety of plastic snacks which could then be removed from the inside of the doll and reused again the jaws were extremely powerful and they'd only stop chewing once they finished eating so if a child happened to get their fingers or
or hair near the toy's mouth, they'd struggle to get the doll to stop eating them. In 1997, Mattel pulled the toy and offered a refund to anyone who had purchased one. These dolls were terrifying kids and parents and obviously were not the safest thing or most practical toy that you guys could get for your kid. I mean, they were terrifying. Look at how they chew. Like, ugh, they're so creepy. But yeah, that's the tea about the Cabbage Patch Snack Time doll. I wouldn't want that Snack Time doll snacking on my hair. That would not end well. So the next toy we're going to be talking about is the Roller Blade Barbie. I've actually never heard of this Barbie before, but this is crazy. What happens with these things is insane. As you guys know, Barbie is probably one of the most famous toys in the entire world, but they've made a large collection of different Barbie dolls over time. In the 1991s, there was a Roller Blade Barbie. Roller Blade Barbie was unique for her flashing skates. While her skates flashed with harmless LED lights, they also literally fired out sparks when you rolled them over a flat surface. So these were a very large potential fire hazard for kids because while they were rolling their Barbies on their little roller skates, they were making literal sparks that could catch grass or anything on fire. That was not a smart choice for Mattel to release a literal roller blade that could spark a fire. <laughs> these things were recalled so incredibly fast, but yeah, they were recalled and no one ended up getting these ever again because they were not safe. So the next toy we're talking about is Aqua Dots. I actually had Aqua Dots when I was super little. They were one of my favorite toys and I remember I was so, so sad and upset when they were pulled from the shelves, but if I would have known why, maybe I wouldn't have been as sad. Aqua Dots were small arranged beads with water that you would spray and fuse together into different shapes and fun figures. It sounds fun, right? But the problem with these was in 2007, these toys had a coating that released the compound GHB. GHB is a compound that would be used in a drug that people use to do very bad things with, um, pretty much pass people out, so that was extremely, extremely concerning that this was found on Aqua Dots, a children's toy. After three children went to comas after swallowing these small toxic pieces, the Consumer Product Safety Commissions recalled 4.2 million Aqua Dot kits. Some even caused seizures in children, and some even left children in comas. Several children in the US and Australia were taken to the hospital for urgent care after ingesting a number of these Aqua Dot beads. So yeah, they might look like they make a really cute design, and trust me, these things were so much fun as a kid, and it's crazy because I think they made like an updated version that's not dangerous or toxic that's on the shelves now because the other day I swear I saw one that was like called Beatos or some newer version of Aqua Dots which was shocking to me. I don't know how they ended up going back in stores but that is extremely concerning and now I'm terrified because I had the original Aqua Dots. So the next doll or dangerous toy we're going to be talking about today is called Sky Dancers. I'm sure you guys have seen these or at least heard of these. I definitely have because a lot of kids when I was in elementary school would bring these things to school school or you know recess time and they would always be playing with these things. I never had one but I've seen plenty. Sky dancers were sold in several different colors and styles including mini sky dancers and fairy flyers. The idea was simple. You'd pull a cord to make them spin into the air and they'd gracefully float back down to the earth. Unfortunately it didn't always work out like that. In their time sky dancers resulted in 100 reports of eye, teeth, and fatal injuries. And some kids even had one of these things fly right into their eyeball causing them to go blind. It turned out these dolls were susceptible to firing off in random directions and it was very easy to accidentally launch them into people's faces. The injuries reported and ranged from temporary blindness to painful facial lactrations that required several extensive stitches. After it became clear that the dolls weren't safe, production was halted and had an incredible 9 million of the toys recalled by manufacturers. These things were dangerous. And not only that, I've seen a meme before, I'm gonna see if I can put it on the screen here, but it was a meme of one of these dolls like landing into like the fireplace, catching on fire, and then trying to fly out. These things were not safe and they could cause a lot of problems, but they were kind of fun though, but not safe. So the next toy we're going to be talking about is Easy Bake Oven. I'm sure you guys have all easily seen these things. I know that when I grew up, I always wanted an Easy Bake Oven and I would bake my family for one and they were like, no, those things are a ripoff. And plus we couldn't afford them back then because I grew up pretty broke, but I would I would always sneak over to my neighbor's house and she had an easy bake oven so I know she was like a lot older than me she was probably like maybe 18 and I was like six so I'd bother her and be like yo can I use your easy bake oven and she would like let me play with hers and I would like destroy it and cause chaos in the kitchen anyways these things have a crazy recall story in May 2006 Hasbro received a huge amount of complaints following the release of easy bake ovens the toy manufacturer received reports of 29 children getting their hands or fingers stuck in the oven's door in addition there were five reports of very serious burns. They actually cause third degree burns, which if you guys didn't know, that's one of the worst kind of burns that you can actually get and it causes a permanent scar. I actually have a scar, I doubt you guys can see, it's on my arm somewhere, 
but it's a third degree burn scar and I was baking a cake how coincidental but yeah I kind of hit into the oven when I was baking a cake and I got a big scar there and it sucked yeah easy bake oven shouldn't be getting that hot because they're just a children's toy but apparently they were to address these problems Hasbro replaced 2006 model with another model that included a plastic grate over the door still problems persisted a further 249 reports were logged and 77 of which concerned burn we're still 16 of these were second or third degree burn one five-year-old had to have part of her finger amputated because of the damage of the burn of her easy bake oven that is so crazy this little girl literally lost a finger just trying to use an easy bake oven like what those things are dangerous and last but not least we're gonna be talking about a Burger King kids little toy that caused some mega mega chaos and these were actually the Burger King Pokemon kids meal toy release and I'm wondering if I ever had these because I know at one point they had released some Burger King Pokemon toys and I remember I was hoarding them I was trying to go every day but let me tell you guys about why these were so incredibly dangerous Burger King began out giving harmless Pokemon ball toy with their kids meals towards the end of 1999 like a giant Kinder Surprise, the Burger King Pokemon Ball would open up and reveal a small plastic Pokemon toy inside. It wasn't the toys themselves which caused the problems. Instead, the issue lay with the balls that concealed the toys. A four-month-old boy actually suffocated while playing with one of these toys. Very, very sad. And super concerning that they would release a toy that could literally have a kid suffocate. A 13-month-old girl and a four-month-old boy both suffocated to death when one half of the plastic balls became suctioned onto their faces and rendered them unable to breathe. Another young girl was almost killed in the same way, but luckily was saved when her father pulled the toy off of her face. This was one of the biggest recalls in history. Burger King ended up recalling 25 million of the Pokeballs. The fast food chain was also sued by the parents of the 13-month-old girl who tragically died, and two parties went out to a reach of monetary settlement on the court. That is so incredibly sad. Those kids were probably so happy to get their kids mail, and then, you know, they were pretty young, so they ended up like, playing with the toy and maybe their parents didn't see it for like a slight second and ended up suffocating which is crazy so that is really dangerous. Furbies. If you hear something in the background, that already is my Furby. This right here is literally my cursed Furby. Pretty sure it's possessed. Right now, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's literally making a sound. Do you guys hear that? My Furby has been growling since I grabbed it out for today's video, which is crazy because today we're gonna be talking about cursed Furbies, scary Furby stories, and weird Furbies you guys didn't know existed, but this is just proving my point. What is wrong with this thing? Why is it hissing? Like literally, I don't know what's wrong with this Furby, if he's just broken, but he's never done this before. Like, I think I broke this Furby. He's literally broken. This is terrifying. I don't know what's wrong with it. Since that Furby wouldn't shut up, I grabbed this Furby and I noticed that this one is now broken. I have two Furbies and those are the two that I have. I've had a lot over the time since I've been little, but these two I recently got from antique stores. Pretty sure the one that's growling is cursed and I'm pretty sure this one's just broken and does not work anymore. But today we're going to be talking about some scary Furby stories and weird design Furbies that you guys might not know have actually existed in the Furby universe. So grab some popcorn, grab a snack, and brace yourself because the tea is Hot. So before I get into the rest of this video, I do want to catch you guys up about the history of Furbies and why they were made. Furby is an American electronic robot toy that was originally released in 1998 by Tiger Electronics. It resembles a hamster or owl-like creature and went through a period of being a must-have toy that everybody wanted. Over 40 million Furbies were sold during the three years of its original production, with 1.8 million sold in 1998 yet alone, and 14 million in 1999. Its speaking capabilities were translated into 24 different languages. Furbies were the first successful attempt to produce and sell domestically aimed robot toys to kids and they kind of just looked really creepy in the first early ages of their design. They were pretty simple but they were pretty much just like the ones I just held and the one that was hissing earlier. That's kind of like the original Furby. A newly purchased Furby starts out speaking entirely in its own language called Furbish. That is their own designated language that all Furbies speak in, Furbish. But it's programmed to start using English words and phrases in place of Furbish over time. The process of learning English but instead it is is Furbish. So over time, since Furbies were created, they started in original versions, but they kind of adapted over time into different ones with electronic blinking eyes, different forms, and different styles of Furbies. And one of the Furbies we're going to be talking about today is so incredibly cursed, well at least the way they promoted it and marketed it is so cursed to me, and I had no idea about this. So the first type of Furby we're going to be covering today is called Furby Babies. In 1999, the Furby Babies line was introduced. Furby Babies are smaller than the originals, and they have higher voices and they 
cannot dance or move around like the typical Furbies do. They also have an extended vocabulary and different Easter eggs and games built into them. Furby babies come in 24 different colors and have white eyelashes and one of six different eye colors included in them. They were a pretty big line of a lot of different shapes, colors, and looks to them. The idea behind these Furby babies was actually kind of cute. However, the commercial was so horrifying. So I'm actually going to show this commercial on the screen right now as I'm talking about it. Basically, there was people in a nursery, right? And they were walking into the nursery to adopt their new Furby baby. So doctors like walk around and they're carrying a blanket almost as if it's a human child. But no, underneath the blanket is a Furby baby, which is kind of unsettling, especially the way that the doctor says Furby baby into the camera. It's horrifying. I hate it. And not only that, but there's a pile of kids that are almost in like a paparazzi sort of situation, excited to pick out their Furby baby. And I guess that was their marketing scheme for this is to make it look exciting. Like every kid wants to adopt their own Furby baby. Um, I don't really know how well that worked for them, but even worse was when I came across a video of what they did at a Toys R Us in 1999 when they first released this toy and how they promoted it. So here's a clip right here. I'm going to put it on screen of yes, a gigantic Furby coming out of a ambulance with people surrounded around it. It was at a Toys R Us for the first launch of Furby Babies and this is a pregnant Furby. Yes, this Furby is preganto. It was about to deliver a bunch of Furby Babies and as soon as they dragged it into the Toys R Us to deliver the Furby Babies, it popped them out, gave birth to them, and then kids took them. <laughs> How unsettling is that, guys? I cannot even believe that that's really a real thing. Yes, it is a real thing. How is it a real thing? Don't ask me how. But kids were apparently really excited to get one out of the pregnant Furby that just birthed a bunch of baby Furbies. So terrifying, to say the least. <laughs> now that we've covered Furby babies, we're going to be talking about something that might just be even more cursed, which is called Shelby's. It sounds like a name of an actual person, but no, this is a type of Furby. This Furby is probably one of the most scariest ones I've ever seen and I didn't even know about it till today when I was doing a little bit of research and digging deep about Furbies. The interactive Shelby is a line of Furby friends released in 2001. At the time, Furby sales were dwindling due to the sheer amount of supplies and colors available. Tiger decided to release one more Furby friend to squeeze in as much life as they could out of their franchise of Furbies. Though Shelby was very popular when it first released, most people passed it off as just another Furby and the same as all the rest of them, although this one was not. After only one year of manufacturing and two generations of Shelby's, production was halted for the Shelby and the Furby, so they completely stopped making these toys. In early 2002, the Furby franchise was officially dropped from the market, leaving many stores marking down Furby products to as little as only $5. Yet when Furbies were first released, people were bidding on them for hundreds of dollars and collecting them like crazy. It was almost impossible to get your hands on a little Furby monster. So Shelby, unlike the normal Furbies, actually speaks in its language called Shelbish, and there's a lot of things about this particular Furby that were horrifying and a lot different than the typical Furbies. Shelby somewhat resembled a Furby inside of a clam shell, which it can be opened and closed like a shell or a clam in a shell or a pearl in a shell for say. Unlike some Shelbies have no tail, instead having a fuzzy mane running down their back and flickering out the sides of their shell. It also has a plastic antenna or tennies on top of its head that kind of go out like a bug or a snail, which are used for communication with the other Furbies and Shelby toys so they can communicate with each other. Kind of like, you know how normal Furbies can speak Furbish to each other. It's really scary if you put two Furbies in the same room, they speak to each other. Horrifying. Well, Shelby can too. It actually could speak to all the Furby babies and the normal Furbies in its own Shelbish language or in Furbish, so it knows both languages. It also has somewhat of a cocky personality to it with a more vulgar attitude than the other Furbies. Unlike Furby and Furby babies, if Shelby is held upside down for about one minute, it can become angry and insulting, which would make it be in a bad mood, often making it retreat back inside of its shell and hide from its owner, so you don't want to piss off your Shelby. But speaking of cursed Furbies, I want to cover some stories I found on Reddit. There was an entire Reddit thread that I scrolled through earlier today talking about times that their Furbies have come alive with no batteries, times that their Furbies have become possessed or potentially haunted, and I've shared some of these stories with you guys before, but today I want to share some more with you guys. So one of the first stories I found on Reddit about somebody's Furby was so crazy to me, so I'm going to tell you guys the tea, because I've heard so many stories about these dolls having issues. And and to this day, even 
I have issues with Furbies. So this one was pretty scary. This girl actually went to a sleepover with her friends. Apparently her and her friends were just watching movies and eating cookies and laying on the sofa, having a good time, and all of a sudden they heard a dark low growl come from her friend's closet. Her friend was like, that's weird, there's really nothing in there. And they're like, well there has to be, because they heard this weird mumbling growl sound. So all the girls were so freaked out thinking some sort of animal got into their house and was trying to like, you know, do something in the closet, who knows? So they decided to open the closet finally because it was freaking them out so much that they thought the house was haunted. And to their surprise, they opened it to see nothing but a pile of toys and one pink Furby sitting on top of the pile with its eyes glowing red. Of course they were freaked out because that girl's Furby was not even hers, it was her mom's from way back in the days apparently. And they turned it around to see there was no batteries in it and it continued to make weird growling noises and light up with its eyes bright red. Of course the girls were so freaked out about this, they decided to get rid of it. They threw it out in the trash can and they claimed that the neighbors were complaining they heard weird sounds from their trash can the rest of the night until the dump truck came the next day and took the thing away for heaven's sake. These toys are so freaky. I don't know why there's been so many like weird coincidences with these toys working without batteries. It kind of blows my mind because I want to see if mine will work without batteries. Right now I think the batteries are supposed to be dead and that thing is hissing so kind of weird. Another story I found on Reddit was super super creepy. So this one was actually about a older toy collector. She had a pile of different toys and she had like a closet full of them. She had all sorts of old Barbies, you know, Brad dolls, uh, Little's Pet Shop. She had pretty much everything you can think of as far as a toy would go. And she had a whole line of Furbies except for this one specific Furby and her collection was gray and all the rest of Furbies were like pinks. She likes pink so she had mostly like pink toys. Anyways, moving along, same. But this gray Furby in the middle of the night would cause mischief with her other toys. She would say that things would fall off the shelf and she would see the Furby sitting on her dresser at different points of the week when she didn't touch it. So she was convinced either there was like a ghost in her house or that her Furby was haunted. And she also claimed that one day she swore the Furby under its breath had said the name of her dead husband. I know that's really creepy, but she swore that the Furby whispered Robert in like a really low grumbling voice, which freaked her out because her husband sadly passed on a few months ago after she added that Furby into her collection. She actually picked it up from a local antique shop because that's where she gets most of her vintage toys. So she of course was so freaked out that she ended up burning it. And then she said everything stopped after she burnt that one specific Furby. Quirky, I don't know. What do you guys think about Furbies? Have you guys ever owned a haunted or cursed or possessed Furby? Daughter is a toy tester and we are blown away by this new AI powered doll house. Well, it's not a doll. It's a whole doll house that's AI powered. And if y'all don't know the new Megan movie, this literally reminds me of the new Megan movie. So take a look. Oh, hi, what's your name? I love your very beautiful teal dress. Oh no, it's literally a repeat of Megan in real life. It's literally just a screen. It walks around in the house? The kid likes it, but I mean, this is gonna turn into a Megan 2.0 situation, you know? She's jumping around all happy now, but not later. It's kind of pure, though. I, I hate that I have to hate on it because it reminds me of Megan, but it is kind of pure. She's literally jumping around different rooms and stuff. It turned its own TV on? This is ridiculous. What is, what is technology becoming? Are, are toys not gonna be toys anymore? Is everything gonna be just like digital? I feel like the future is gonna be all digital because kids don't even play with toys anymore. Half of them play with iPads. So this is kind of scary. Okay, so this person has a doll and uh, it's not acting quite right. Take a look. I don't even think it's supposed to be turned on right now. That does not sound right. Ayo? Why is its ears like- Oh, it moved! It moved! It literally just smiled and the guy like threw it. It was like, oh heck no. Now that ain't no typical doll. He needs to burn it, okay? He needs to burn that thing to the ground. It's cursed. So I recently made an art room, okay? Where is this going to escalate? Okay, uh, they have a Care Bear, and I'm afraid my little brother will come in and mess with things. Why are they cutting their Care Bear's face? So I'm making a bunch of scary toys to scare him out. They're making a cursed Care Bear. Oh my gosh. Now that is actually horrifying. Pretty sure that's gonna- oh, they hung it. it that, yeah, that's gonna keep the brother out, okay? Uh, that would even keep me out. Scared me to shiver. Oh, I think this is one of those, like, snake game toys. These are scary. I'm not good with, like, games like this where you don't know. Like, the suspense of, like, not knowing when it's going to, like, lash at you. So they're each grabbing one until the snake bites them. That's actually so creepy. 
Oh, it's rattling harder. Oh, okay. Yep, I would not be good at that game, all right? That game would actually make me freak out. I hate the suspense of not knowing when something's going to happen. All right, I don't know what this is, but uh, it's some sort of teddy bear, I, I guess. I don't know. All right. Peekaboo. Oh my! Okay. Yep, nope, nope. We ain't playing peekaboo no more. That thing can put his face back on where it belongs. I did not need to see all that. Okay, Barbie eats a pizza for the first- oh, What? That ain't no Barbie. Never give a giant Barbie pizza. It's Barbie a giant never Barbie had food and she pizza? had a nightmare and she freaked out. That's not Barbie! Now she's looking for more pizza. That is she's so creepy! On her pizza. I don't like pineapples on my pizza either. I mean, I don't blame her, but geez. If that's a Barbie, I'm not trying to play with her, okay? That's that's creepy. That literally looked like a giant whore doll puppet. The government does not want this to exist. Oh, Furbies again? Causing chaos to the whole city? Why do Furbies have to be so problematic? Let's take a look. We come across these run the other way. Run these are the not other toys, way. and they're definitely not for kids. The government had to ban the toy after several oh. reports of them speaking and even moving on their own. They're One creepy, person reported though. That after several years of locking them away, they heard the Furby scream. <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> they heard their Furby scream in the middle of the night? Well, to be fair, I have had some Furbies go off without the batteries, so... Maybe there is something going on, all right? I don't know. I need to get to the bottom of this Furby haze, this Furby craze. The Furbies are on the loose and they need to be stopped. Oh, not another one of these. My Barbie! That ain't no Barbie! Yeah, I don't know what they think, but that, that's a Barbie right there, okay? See that? That in the corner of the screen? That's a Barbie. This! Looks like a mummified puppet, but let's let's continue the video. My Barbie is 300 years old, and she's oh, alive. Oh, it's a 300-year-old Barbie. Okay, maybe alive. that makes more sense. Toys are sleeping, and they can awake at any moment. Look at your toys in the eyes and tell me if it blinks. I'm actually gonna have nightmares tonight. Whatever we just watched, I wish I could unwatch it because I did not enjoy it. I did not enjoy that video. <laughs> Moving along. Okay, so this is another AI generated robot, I'm pretty sure. Makes me think that the future is going to be all digital toys and we're not just gonna have typical dolls anymore. Everything's gonna be a robot. So this robot apparently talks to kids too. Let's take a look. Why do you look sad? I feel a little sad that I don't have any hair. Yours looks <laughs> He's bald. Why is he more like a penguin? He's like, he's gonna fly away. <laughs> it wants to be human, yo? Okay, that was sketchy. Everything was fine until he said, I want to understand what it means to be human. Then it wasn't fine anymore. And then he started doing the penguin flaps. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that toy is, but I would not want it. Okay, I, I hope that the children of today go back to the Furbies at this point. All right, and that's saying a lot. Kids toys that got banned. All right, we need to know. These are kids toys that got banned, part three. Part oh, three. First is this toy. Potty this time toy with Elmo. This potty time with Elmo. Why is and Elmo it so problematic? To kids go to the bathroom, but instead it took a disturbing turn. One of the Did buttons it. was supposed to say, uh oh, who has to go? Uh oh, who has to go? It said, uh oh, who wants to die? Here really? Is that video. I say some phrases though that toddlers probably shouldn't be hearing. Here's what Elmo was supposed to say. Okay, that sounds fine. did hear that it literally did say uh oh who wants to die okay i don't know if like the makers of this some of them like you know did some of these books incorrectly for their own enjoyment or if it was like a low battery situation and elmo all of a sudden started sounding like he said uh oh who wants to die instead of uh who wants to go to potty but that's like two very different phrases so um I don't really have an explanation for that. That's creepy. All right, demonic children's this toys. This is the scariest child's toy. And oh. This story is truly disturbing. Oh, I think I've seen this the one before. Evil stick wand the evil stick wand. Made headlines in 2014 after someone found what Yeah, that's that's to be horrifying. I don't like that. A demonic figure. Literally a demon in their the magical wand. Foil. Speculation quickly turned into Looks like those dollar store toys. Led to its ban. Good, it got banned, okay? That poor kid who wanted to just play with their magical wand had to open it up one day and see that picture inside. They probably never wanted to ever have another toy again, okay? That thing is so creepy. All right, this this has to be one of those those creepy plushies again, but it looks like a cute little elephant, but let's just take a look. Nope, 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 that's not no cute elephant. Oh, it's just getting worse progressively. <laughs> They're so ugly, oh my gosh. Wait, the bunny too? 
Wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> Wait, the ending, the kid just goes, Mama! Possessed scary toy. It looks like an alpaca. It looks cute. I don't know what could be so bad. They thought it would be a normal toy. It looks normal. Okay. All right. Whoa, 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 okay, no, that ain't no normal toy. All right, yep, yep, that had, um, I don't even have words for what I just watched. <laughs> that thing turned into an actual demon, okay? I don't know. Scariest toys of all time. Scariest toys of all time, part one. This is Sir Growzalot. Sir Growzalot is like kind a nice of adorable, teddy bear, though. And tons of people cute. have bought him for their kids. But believe I'd it or not, him. this teddy bear has made hundreds of children cry. Although innocent looking at first, How? when you give him a hug, this happens. Oh, 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 I have one of those ones. They're like the angry face ones that you push in and their teeth just submerge and they're actually kind of adorable in a really creepy way. I, I like those. I like those ones. Okay, so this last doll here is called Baby Secret. I've actually done videos about this doll and heaven knows why somebody wake, woke up and decided to make a doll that whispers in your ear a secret in a really sinister voice, but I guess they thought it was a good idea back in the days. So there's a pull string and this doll whispers secrets and it's just really unsettling, but take a look. She is a baby secret. Yeah, she, she is a baby is secret. From Mattel, the creator of Barbie made this thing. This little demon was made by the Barbie's creator. All right, let's hear her. I wanna hear her. They literally just said, I like to sleep with you. Like, what kind of secret are they trying to teach to kids? Like, having their doll whisper in the air, I like to sleep with you. Like, no! Is that it? Is she gonna whisper something else? I know a secret, do you? No, I don't know a secret and I'm not trying to know one, okay? That would actually horrify the heck out of me. Oh, I've talked about these ones before. Okay, dancers are undoubtedly familiar to everyone who grew mm, I had, or thought I had one of these as a kid. And I knew a lot of kids at school that had these things. They would fly around and they would hit people in the face. These flying fairies seem to be more menacing than they appear. Wait a second, they had a Spider-Man? I didn't even know they had boy versions of Sky Dancers. Cause I just want to say most of them were like ballerinas and fairies. Like really cute ones, at least from what I remember. I'm surprised they had Boy Sky Dancers. Place the doll on the base, pretend to start a push lawnmower, and there you have it. You've thrown a spinning propeller into the ones. air, which will fly in unpredictable directions. Yes. Yes, it fired Very off in random directions, and it was effortless for it to launch into people's faces. Oh. Okay, did you guys see that launch? That thing like zoomed. Okay, that is definitely, I could see that hitting eyeballs and making a lot of kids, you know, Probably plot revenge on one of each other at recess time and stuff, just like firing them at each other. That would be bad. Galoob Toys Inc. banned these playthings for good reason. After 150 reports of eye injuries, <laughs> damaged corneas, that's not funny. Why am I teeth, laughing? That's really bad. Facial lacerations and even a slight concussion. A concussion? Right? Hold up, they had a concussion from a sky dancer. Well. That's why they got banned. Oh my goodness. Until you hear about the snack time cabbage patch cabbage kids. Cabbage patch kids. I've talked about these. Moving on to number 14, splash off water rockets. Never heard of this. On the one hand, the splash off water rocket was not that a bad toy fun. if you were trying to depict the dangers of science realistically. On the Ooh. other hand, it was a wrong choice if you didn't want to learn a painful lesson about over pressurizing plastic containers and products made by the lowest bidder. Oh, the toy wasn't no, always that would not end good. high quality materials, and the plastic would occasionally rupture. It would hit the kids playing with the toy and, well, end a fun time. I mean, they look really fun. I want to go out there and shoot water rockets into the sky, but I could definitely see where those things could be pretty heavy if they had, like, a lot of water in them and they could smash into someone's face. Yeah, I could see the danger there. Number 13, Aqua Leisure Baby Boat. A baby boat? It's a terrible scenario. You How put could a that kid be dangerous? in a pool float to keep them safe, only for them to vanish into the water. What? These inflated water toys failed to achieve the one thing they were designed to accomplish. That keep is so bad. Afloat. The shoddy plastic material would often rip, and oh. babies would plop right into the water. Those poor little babies. Just imagine you're trying to have a swim time as a child. Like, how did they have one job to create like a baby water float and fail that one job? That doesn't even make sense. Like, how could they fail that bad? Although it later came to light that Aqua Leisure knew about the problem, the they company knew? did not recall the product until at least 30 drowning deaths. <laughs> I'm trying to process that. So they knew about the problem and they're like, okay, it's fine. And then finally when 30 babies died, they're like, okay, we'll recall it. 
That is horrible. The company behind them got into great trouble. Yep. Sounds horrible, but wait for the toy that can bite your fingers off. That was scary. <laughs> Number 12, Super Blast Balls. Did Super you ever have a pair balls. of these? Super Paying Blast Balls do exactly what they sound like. They make thunderous noises. What? How do they work? They're two colorful balls that kids could smack together to hear a <laughs> I'm sorry, but wait. They're two colorful balls that kids could smack together. All right, let's continue on. <laughs> Ump out of your skin noise and occasionally see some sparks, and that's it. What? Now, as riveting as that may sound, they were only on the market for a short time before- Okay, but what are they made out of? If they're making like sparks and stuff and they make loud sounds, like that is super weird. I've never heard about these. First complaints of burn injuries and clothes catching fire Oof. arose. That's a not toy good. that allows children to fire caps from their hands? It's no surprise it was banned. That definitely sounds pretty dangerous. Um, yep, not gonna play with that one. Number 11, belt buckle Derringer toy gun. <sighs> okay, I always noticed like how back in the days like gun toys were more acceptable, but now they would definitely not fly. I remember also when I was younger, I would go to like gift shops. I remember specifically, it was like South Dakota, like by Mount Rushmore. They always sold like fake guns, but like, come on, a belt buckle toy gun, that is not good for kids. Every little boy's Christmas list in 1959 included this toy. That's bad. It did however pack a punch in the gut. This belt buckle gun would shoot a toy bullet and a cap when the user extends his stomach when worn around the waist. What? No, it didn't fire shots, nor were objects projected, but a flame was, and you guessed it, the cap could catch fire. That is so dangerous. Okay, I don't know what they were thinking there. Like, obviously kids are not going to be mature, especially little boys with like a little tiny toy gun belt. Like, there's just so much wrong with this. Unfortunately for wannabe cowboys, the caps could be set off accidentally by friction and cause severe burns. Ouch. This is definitely not something you want around your nether mm -mm. regions. Every easy bake, oh dreamed yeah. of having an easy bake oven. I dreamed of my moment when I was a kid that I could have an easy bake oven and um, it never happened. I was super sad about it. So I went to my neighbor's house and then I played with hers and I probably broke it. Yeah, you know. Who doesn't want to bake cookies and cakes on their own in their tiny oven? Tiny One of the so most fun. significant dangers of owning an Easy Bake was that it became hot enough that children may and did injure themselves in these ovens, hot. which resulted in severe burns. This is clearly a tragedy waiting to happen, mainly because the ovens might reach temperatures of up to 200 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I could imagine a 200 degree possible baby oven would not be a good idea, especially for children, especially because a lot of them are not mature enough to even bake a cake or do any of that. But the idea and concept behind easy bake ovens was pretty cool, not gonna lie. There were approximately 250 incidences reported. That's a lot of incidents. With children suffering from second and third degree burns in 16 Ouch. of them. One five-year-old had to have a part of her finger removed. Oh, what? Number nine, That's CSI crazy. fingerprint examiner. What is this? While it's a little disturbing to see youngsters playing with toy forensic investigation kits designed to simulate. Okay, but I just want to pause the video because do you guys remember when like you would have like scholastic book fairs in your school? Am I the only one who used to love scholastic book fair kits? I feel like this would be like one of those. You know what I'm saying? Acting evidence in a murder scene. It's all in good fun. The toy was inspired fun, by the CBS show CSI. Mm. The gadget allowed children to collect evidence while wearing latex gloves. Dusting for fingerprints was one of the more fun parts. However, the dust That's had weird. a little more than non-toxic substances. Oof. It contained one of the deadliest forms of asbestos. The powder contained 7% asbestos, which can cause lung cancer later in life if one is exposed to it what? even once. That's the company dangerous. Ended up going bankrupt due to this significant error. Not just a significant error, that is a huge error, just saying. Like, that could go very wrong. Imagine attempting to create a genuinely safe toy and failing miserably. Wait! It I had these yo-yo water balls. Like, I would win these at the arcade all the time. I had plenty of these. There's no way. Like, I don't know how this one is dangerous. I'm very curious. Yo-yo water ball is that. How can something like a toy be dangerous? How? After all, it's soft. Not only did yo-yo water balls contain questionable materials, but their design was potentially dangerous. How? According to Little Things, it used flammable diesel hydrocarbons to make it. Like there have in been the over rubber? 400 cases of near strangulation reported with the use what? of the yo-yo ball. 
How could somebody almost strangle themselves with like a little plastic toy yo-yo ball unless they willingly are like wrapping it around their neck? Like its cord was getting wrapped around the necks of kids yeah, it's and the in kids some fault. cases causing them to black out. What? The cord material was somewhat sticky to make matters worse, making it difficult to release if it did get around the neck. It wasn't that sticky! Do you remember wanting or even owning one of these? Lucky you. Number 7. Dive Sticks dive The idea sticks. behind the diving sticks was to toss them into the pool, let them sink, and then have the kids <gasps> go in and collect them. Oh my gosh, I used to have, well, I had a lot of dive, like, fishies and different toys. I remember I used to use, like, pebbles when I used to, like, do diving games and stuff like that, but I did have dive sticks. The only thing that I think could be dangerous about these is the factor that you're willingly going to get it, and you can't get to the surface in time. But that's on the kid, not the dive stick. These weren't just entertaining for the youngsters, but they also gave parents a few moments of peace as their kids spent more time beneath the water collecting them. I am potentially How could something drowning. As <laughs> harmless as a weighted stick be so dangerous? The trouble started with the materials from which it was made. Really? Some of the products were made from hard plastic, which would stand up when they sink to the bottom of the pool. Huh. There were recalls in 1999 because kids supposedly got impaled and even had to have surgery for their injuries. What? Speaking of injuries, the number one toy in this video is pretty horrible too. So, I don't understand like how they were getting the injuries. Like, okay, they were diving for a dive stick, it's made out of something bad. I don't understand. Number six, candy cigarettes. Oh, these were weird. If you were these a were child during or before the 60s and early really 70s, you might remember having plenty of access to these guys and were made of either chalky sugar, bubblegum, or chocolate. Some okay, even... but I heard that they taste nasty, okay? They don't even taste good. And the whole idea of it is just bad that they wanted to make a candy that resembled, like, hey, smoking is cool. It's not cool. Don't smoke, kids, all right? It's not good for you. It had powdered sugar at the tip so that you could blow through the candy stick and make it look like it was smoke. That's so stupid. You can probably already see the problem with these. I can the more than see the problem. The was used on the candy packets, the perfect way for kids to mirror exactly what the grown-ups were doing. That's so bad. <sighs> Number five, innocent looking but secretly evil Teletubby. <gasps> Teletubbies, oh my gosh. Don't get me started about Teletubbies. As a kid, I don't know why, but I liked the Teletubbies when I was very little, but now they definitely freak me out, especially the baby son. It's all based on the character from the children's television show Teletubbies. And what could be safer than a Teletubby? <laughs> Though Everything. this talking po doll never injured Those are any child physically, it was removed from the shelves in 1998, the same year it was released. Okay, nope. I just want to pause the video. That is horrifying. Like, imagine you wake up at 3 a.m. and that's the first thing you see. That glaring soul of a Teletubby. Okay, I don't know what's dangerous about it, but that thing is creepy. Suspected an adorable Teletubby toy of speaking a questionable language. Parents weren't too happy to learn what their child's doll was teaching them. What? They heard the doll say inappropriate things, including, bite my butt, and other phrases. <laughs> bite my butt? Okay, I don't know who thought or what happened. Maybe like one of the workers like did those things where like they make it say like something, but it sounds like something else. I'm guessing that's what it was, but that's really bad. Unsuitable for children. Not a toy you'd want to get for your kid, right? Nope. Number four, fidget spinner. <gasps> Have you managed spinners. to get your hands on a fidget spinner? Okay, remember a few years ago when everybody cared about fidget spinners? It's kind of like trends come and go, but fidget spinners always annoyed me for some reason. Like, I never got into them. I never cared for them, but like, I would go everywhere. I would go to like a Walmart, a Target, even like probably Disneyland. I was in Hawaii and they had fidget spinners, like Hawaiian fidget spinners. Like, they were just so stupid. The brightly colored device, which can be spun, flipped, and even tossed with one hand, How fun. has started making its way into classrooms around the country. They got banned in a if lot of classrooms. If you've not heard of them, fidget spinners are little handheld gadgets, initially designed to help children with autism and ADHD concentrate at school. What's well, a good The idea good behind point. them is that as children spin and flip them, they can focus more clearly on the words they're hearing and the lesson they're in. I never Many thought about that. Many schools have fought back against the gadgets. Some say are distracting and potentially harmful. The dangers of fidget spinners aren't just limited to annoying teachers and frustrating parents. They are annoying. Parents have reported chipped teeth, cuts, bruises, and damaged property. Really? Not to forget the trend of duct taping razor blades to the spinner spokes. A clear a razor blades on a fidget spinner? Okay, that would be bad. That would be like a real life ninja star, honestly. So 
I bet there was kids that did some bad stuff with the fidget spinners, all right? They were banned at my school. Number three, Aqua Dots. <gasps> Aqua Dots! Mm -hmm. I loved Aqua Dots as a kid, and I remember talking about these. They have chemicals that are bad in them, but they were so fun. I loved them. Tiny beads, spritz them with water, and your design will fuse together. Sounds I fun, miss right? Them. One of 2007's more popular toys, Aqua Dots, were small, colorful beads arranged into different designs it was and then so permanently fun and set with water sprinklers. The water activated a glue in the beads covering, fusing them together. Although the beads appeared harmless, complaints quickly emerged of toddlers vomiting and collapsing into comas after That's ingesting so, them. so bad! Now what's the reason behind this? Because scientists discovered that the glue included ingredients that converted into the date rape drug gamma hydroxybutyrate. <gasps> that that was a good idea like out of all the ingredients i'm sure that they could have found like a second hand ingredient at the time even that was not you know that specific ingredient i think they like i said they did make a remake of aqua dots and i think they're called beatos or something like that and they're back in the store i saw them in target the other day but the original aqua dots not good i remember i got so sad when they got recalled that as a kid great some unlucky children suffered seizures with two of them in the U.S. slipping into comas due to eating the beads. That's so sad. Number two, lawn darts. Lawn it darts. doesn't take much imagination to see why steel missiles with weighted skewers could make for a dangerous they toy. They never went well. What could well. possibly go wrong with heavy Everything. metal darts with a very sharp tip at the end? Lawn darts or jarts or giant jarts. plastic darts with weighted and sharpened metal tips. I remember I used to have PE class and we did like a section on darts and I think some kids to be mean like the bullies would take darts and they'd be like oops and they would like throw it at each other so I can see where these went very very wrong especially as a toy for kids. Kids just shouldn't have darts in their hands. Kids were supposed to throw into plastic hoops on the lawn, a sort of hybrid between darts and horseshoes. The darts are meant to be grasped by the rod and launched underhand towards the target but they can cause skull punctures and other serious injuries. Skull punctures? If you think that sounds dangerous, the U.S. government agrees with you. They were banned in the U.S. after 6,100 people were sent to the emergency room for the injuries they caused. 6,100 people were hurt by lawn darts? That's crazy. I mean, normal darts, I feel like that's the one I used in school was normal darts, but still, that's a lot of people. No wonder why they got banned in the USA. It didn't take much time before the dark side of lawn darts reared its ugly, pierced head. Yep. Now we move on to the moment you've all been waiting for. Number one, snack time, cabbage snack patch kid. Snack time, cabbage patch kid. games until someone loses a finger. Wait, what? The cabbage patch kids were huge in the 80s that came with their own adoption certificates and famously squishy body. Okay, I just hate what Cabbage Patch dolls look like, especially because we've covered them before. And remember that little garden that the Cabbage Patch like dolls actually grow out of? There we go. Look at <laughs> Basically, as you guys can see here, there's a garden with like little lettuce things and cabbage kids that grow and like you get to pick your own. Everything about Cabbage Patch Kids creeps me out, but specifically that and this. The snack time kid had a motorized I mouth that launched down food. on plastic goodies fed to it. Unfortunately, the doll couldn't differentiate between plastic and human. Uh, it didn't so take long for little fingers to get caught up in the action. Another victim of this ever hungry doll was hair. Also, there was no <gasps> way to turn it. If it was hair, I would be doomed. That thing would eat my hair alive. Kind of like a ticket eater at the arcade. I've always been scared of those two. Once something got into the snack time kit, it was going to keep going. Okay, so this person says my little niece got this cute toy to help her start crawling. But there was a problem with this cow. Let's take a look. My little niece got this cute toy to help her start crawling. It's Except it says cow. the most inappropriate things. What does it say? Listen. It just called her master. That's a kid's toy. What? Don't touch my belly. <laughs> what the heck? I'm not afraid of pain. Is it teaching kids not to be afraid of pain? What is going on now? It's lighting up red. Why is it saying such things? Oh my goodness. Okay, well that's one interesting toy. I can't believe some of the stuff it's saying and that this is for kids. I don't know. Maybe it's teaching kids not to mess with animals, but it could have the wrong message to it. It depends on the kid that's playing with it, really. I'm just shocked. Let me go. Let me go. 
It's crying! I'm just a baby cow! I'm just a baby cow! <laughs> I've never heard of that toy before. Okay, so this is apparently one of the most deadliest dangerous toys ever made. Let's take a look. Most dangerous toys of all time. This is the snack time cabbage patch kit. This doll actually had a mechanical jaw. This is so what? it would chew when you put fake food in its mouth. They oh, actually had no. to stop making this because so many kids were getting their hair and fingers stuck <laughs> in the doll's mouth. And then that the doll would, would not let go. Fire department was called multiple times. The most dangerous That's toys bad. of all time. This Imagine is calling the, snack the fire time. department and being like, hey, my kid was playing with their cabbage patch doll and now their hair is getting ripped out. Can you come help with that? <laughs> that would be such an embarrassing call to have to make as a parent. Most dangerous toys of most all time. Most dangerous toys beads of all time. Beads. Colorful beads that when you put into water, Everybody's they had grow water up to beads. 200 times their size. <laughs> Seems fun, but it's They're very bad fun. news for any kids that want to eat them. Why would there anybody eat those? There have been reports of kids eating these and these balls no. growing inside their intestines, blocking what? it, and then needing surgery. Some no. brands were recalled in 2012, but mostly they're still sold today. Most dangerous yeah, most stores do still sell water beads or what are those ones called? Orbeez? Those ones I remember as well. I just remember always having them or like filling a vase with them and putting them like flowers in them or I don't know. There's a bunch of different versions of those, but why would any kid want to eat them? I know they can look like a, maybe like a watery like dip and dot, but they're not. So of course they would expand in your stomach and possibly kill you. The deadliest toys in the world. The I need deadliest to know. toys in the world. Clackers win the award for breaking the most jaws Clackers. out of any other kid's toy. Those look the design heavy. is very simple. There are just two heavy balls, <laughs> usually made of hard acrylic, suspended from a string oh. or a plastic stick. Kids would then swing them back and forth as fast as they could to make a clacking sound. Oh which my. is great until they shattered and sent acrylic shrapnel into your face. That would or hurt. Into your friend's skull. They're still Yikes. sold today, but now they're they still look sold like this because the original oh, design was just Oh, I've too seen deadly. the plastic ones. Like Fallen Share for more weird facts. So, like, yeah, the original ones were heavy, big balls. <laughs> that sounds weird to say it. Big balls that were heavy. Anyways, moving along. Yeah, I don't know who would want to give those to the kids. Like, obviously, that's not going to end well. They could throw it at each other and cause some damage with those. Two year old swallowed 22 magnets from a toy. What? The boy has spent a week no. in agony after accidentally that's so sad. swallowing. 22 magnets from a popular toy. When Frankie's older brothers brought home a toy from the park, Mum Bree thought nothing of it. They were very small, so I didn't see them as a choking Just because they're small they doesn't mean that your kid might not consume popular them. Online, these magnets oh, stick together I've seen to those magnets! Originally yep. believing Those the little boy had gastro, over the oh, next no. week it took four trips to hospital before doctors figured out what was going on That's inside so Frankie's sad. body. They decided to go in for surgery with the camera. They Ooh. managed to find 22 in total 20 throughout his of them? intestine. That's a Too lot of magnets. Too to show up in an ultrasound. The high-powered magnets Aww, had dug into the, kid the two-year-old's okay. organs and tore Ooh. a hole in his digestive system. That's awful. He was in surgery for three hours. Oh. Yeah, it was horrendous. I was pacing the hospital floor. That's the really bad. The magnets actually been banned in Australia for 10 years. Wow, so the toy got banned after that, which is probably good because those magnets are so tiny. Like, I remember seeing how small those ones were. I definitely played with those as a kid, which I don't know. They definitely weren't safe if anybody consumed them or... The wrong person got a hold of them or even animals were to swallow those bad things would happen disturbing kids toys that got banned disturbing kids hmm. toys that got banned time monsters time monsters that one's kind of interesting oh those are the ones with those weird messages sounds like gibberish that's so creepy why do they sound like that? And they're saying a hidden message? Disturbing so kids' creepy. toys. That got so I wonder if like the people that made those like decided each one has its own secret hidden message. Comment down below if you guys heard the secret message from the toy. 1957, a seed of science was planted in the fertile minds of children that would blossom in the 60s and really change the global course of history. You see, this a is deep. <laughs> company launched a new 
238 Atomic Energy Lab. Only the most oh. dangerous toy ever. It contained four small jars of real uranium. It had really? Alpha, beta, and, and they were giving this to children? Sources. To kids? It found under thousands of Christmas trees. Oh and my gosh. For reasons, government had to ban the product because yeah. in 1957, a Jeez. Okay, well, good planet. thing they banned those. Kids should not be having dangerous chemicals or utensils to play with as a toy. That's not obviously not a toy, and that could end very badly. While some toys bring back a sense of nostalgia, others are too dangerous. Ooh. Clackers, aka click clacks, oh, are knockers. Oh, those the same things These from the other video? These toys were designed to be knocked together as fast and hard as possible. I still don't know who thought that was imagine, a good idea. Plenty of lamps, TVs, oh, and yeah, they'd be breaking bones other things around too. Lawn darts, aka jarts. These Jarts. solid, heavy pieces of metal were pointy enough to impale someone. 7,000 injuries were reported 7, before these toys people? were banned in 1988. Well, obviously, I would never play with either of those, but 7,000 injuries from just one toy? Like, what? That's bad. Scariest kids' toys that got banned. Here's what Elmo was supposed to say. Let's try and use the <laughs> But several books came with this sound instead. Who wants to die? Did you guys hear that? That's bad. Okay, I would probably edit that part. Yeah, same. I would probably edit that part too. Like it literally clearly said, ha ha, who wants to die? How does one go from one extent to that? Like what were the creators of the book with Elmo thinking? Elmo has been behind a lot of schemes with bad toys. Weirdest kids toys Weirdest ever. Weirdest kids toys ever, part two. Next up, we got these poopy Tom fun shapes. Poopy Tom fun you shapes. Stick that up. Yo, butthole. What? And then you're supposed to poop out different no. shapes. No! I've got so many questions about this one, but the biggest one is just why. Like, it's all enough to poop out one. Like, why you got to add like two buttholes in there? Like, no. The fact that this was actually a thing and then people bought it. They some messed up. That is disgusting. I'm sorry for like, just be like, but I'm just processing. You cannot tell me that poopy time fun shapes were a real thing. Please tell me this is a joke. That is so disgusting. Who, what, why? That's terrible. This is considered to be the creepiest children's toy and its story is truly disturbing. The so-called evil stick wand evil wouldn't stick make news wand. until 2014 after someone finds what appears to be an eerie image of a demonic figure what? cutting themselves hidden behind the shiny foil. That's Speculation scary. quickly turned into controversy, which ultimately led to its ban. Imagine you give that wand to your kid and they're like, la 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 la, they're just playing with it, you know? And then they turn around and they see that image? That would be traumatizing for any child. <laughs> Most dangerous kids toys. Dangerous kids toys part five. Have you ever wanted to throw a sharp and pointy projectile object at your siblings or friends? No. Well, look no further than lawn darts. These small aerodynamic plastic darts were first popular in the 1960s in the premise. This was, was a terrible simple. idea. Two players would stand opposite each other and take turns throwing their darts toward a circle placed on the ground. Obviously, a lot of things away. could go and wrong the goal, with this. Of course, to be to get the dart to stick up in the circle. Only there was one issue. These darts were literally plastic rockets with swords sticking out of the front. Yikes! Them too, Imagine like a kid just like. Like peeling. <gasps> Did that actually mouth. get now, stuck in that kid's head? No. Next to your towards the same hoop, there was a little to no issue. Only yeah, there's a lot of injuries that have happened with lawn darts. These are terrible. Three American kids. <gasps> they stayed People on died? Until 1988 when they were banned from sale in the United States. At least they finally got banned because honestly, it just takes one kid to throw a dart like that at you and cause a terrible injury. Toys that were so bad that they, so were bad they were banned. Part 12. Elmo doll again? Oh, I think I think I've seen this. Yep, that doll literally said "kill James," which is the kid Boys who owned the so doll. Bad, that is so bad. Why is Elmo always having dysfunctions where he sounds like he's saying something that he's not really supposed to? Mm -hmm. Elmo is sus. Ooh, what is this? Norman. Norman was created Norman. approximately 18 years ago to see him in a music video for the band Interpol. However, it's so ugly. Him, but unfortunately, Norman went missing for 10 years. In 2014, a public sale became listed on iCollector.com under the title Animatronic Creepy Ghoul Puppet from Creepy Music Ghoul Video. Puppet. After 10 years, That's Norman convincing. Someone's going to buy that right and up. And he appeared very badly. Having a devoted mm, he looks so base, destroyed. And he went missing once more for another five 
five years. So, so ugly. So a YouTuber managed to locate him and purchase him. Ooh, he looks so messed up and creepy. That's crazy somebody located him. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what are some other weird, scary toys you guys want me to make videos reacting to in the future. Comment down below letting me know what was the scariest kid's toy you had growing up. And it's gonna be it for today's video. Be sure to subscribe to join the family so you guys don't miss out on my weekly videos. And smash the like if you guys enjoyed today's video. And I'll see all of you lovely people in the next one. Bye, guys.